What is up, guys? It's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to another Movies from the 2000s Month review, and this is of the 2006 reboot of the long-running James Bond franchise starring the blonde James Bond, Daniel Craig, in his first outing, Casino Royale. Yep, this is a good movie, a really, really good movie. After the box office disaster of to uh, you know, die another day, which was a, com a complete joke for the from the critics, and audiences did not embrace it. It had some terrible CGI in it and some bad casting and some decisions. I don't hate the movie; it's kind of a guilty pleasure ish. But this movie was the the franchise had to be rebooted some way, and four years later they did a complete kind of a prequel reboot with a young Bond in his prime before he was 007, and this is a great way to go. I will say this, there's a lot of good points for this movie, but I also have some negatives as well. Good points. Daniel Craig is an awesome Bond. I don't want to hear it. Oh, he's blonde. He's not good enough. I say he's better than Lazenby. And in some ways, in his later films, he's still better than Roger Moore. I like Roger Moore, but I still think that, you know, he he's better. In some, in most of his, because uh, this and Skyfall are two of the best Bond films in the in, re, in like the last 10 years. And uh, Lazenby, you know, did one and they thought it was boring. And uh, uh, some some of the uh, later ones from uh, Roger Moore were kind of like, eh, you know, like Man with the Golden Gun from A uh, View to a Kill, etc. But this is about Casino Royale. Craig is good in the role. He's badass. He's freaking intense. He's meaner than the other Bonds, but he's more, you know, a, a, a basically updated version of Bond. And I never read any of the books, so I don't know if this is faithful to the source material, but he's he's a badass as Bond. Two, the action is really well done in this movie. Like, the way they the, the movie opens is freaking awesome. The chase scene, it goes on for a while. It's very different. It's not shaky cam. I can see what's going on. You know, it's, it's really, really energetic and fast-paced in that scene. Really good action sequences. Definitely a plus for the movie. Uh, three, um, the villain is kind of interesting. I think he's, he's, uh, he's all right. He's not, uh, the best villain. It's Mads Mikkelsen. He's also going to be in Doctor Strange. So he has a villain face. I think he does fine. I also like Jeffrey Wright. I like, uh, I also like, what's her face? Judy Dench's M is good. And it's, there's no gadgets in the movie, so it does something different. And also, um, the film has a good story, you know. It's it basically, it says Casino Royale begins with Bond before he holds his license to kill. See, it's a prequel to Bond. Bond is no less dangerous, though, and with two professional assassinations in quick succession, he is elevated to 00 status. Basically how he became 007, and, and, you know, before Dr. No. And, uh, yeah, M, head of the British service, Secret Service, sends the newly promoted 007 on his first mission that takes him to Madagascar. The Bahamas... And eventually leads him to Montenegro to face Le Chiffre. I don't know. It's I don't speak French. A ruthless financier under threat from his terrorist clientele, who is attempting to restore his funds in a high-stake poker game at the Casino Royale. M places Bond under the watchful eye of the Treasury official Vesper Lind. At first skeptical of what value Vesper can provide, Bond's interest in her deeper deepens as they brave to, to, uh, danger together. Les Chaffrer's cunning and cruelty come to bear on them both a way Bond could never imagine, and he learns his most important lesson, trust no one. I agree with that. There are three things I don't care for in this movie. One, I think the movie is a little bit too long. One of the problems I've had with these recent Bond films is that they feel like they take forever to end. The action's really good, but when there's no action, there's a lot of padding. And it just goes on forever. This and Skyfall are two of the longest Bond movies ever made. They're good, but they're way too long. You could cut 10 or 15 minutes from this movie. It would not have made a difference. The intro, the, you could still have the intro. You can still have the kick-ass action. You don't need the padding. There's a scene where Bond is naked on a chair for some reason, and the villain is knocking him in the balls. It's just hard to watch. I'm like, you don't need to turn this into Hostel. That's not what Bond was about. Two, I don't care about the lead girl. Ava Green, don't care about her. She's nice to look at, not much of a character. She basically, you know, like on and off with Bond, and then she dies at the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah, kind of serves no purpose. And three, 
Um, basically, yeah, like I said before, there's some padding. It's good. It's a really beautiful looking film. It's really well done, but there's some scenes that I did not need to see, like the scene with the chair. There's other scenes with Eva Green that I don't buy their romance. I think the romance is kind of forced. And that's why Bond in the next film in, uh, in Quantum of Solace is with another girl, because I just didn't care for Eva Green in the movie. I think she's kind of the weaker Bond, recent Bond girls in the last 10 years. Nice looking woman. Not much of an actress for me. She's like a mix of like French and British. And I don't I'm like, what are you? Are you French or are you British? What accent are you doing? I don't get it. I know Bond is a British character. I'm not going to hold that against any of these films. Craig is awesome. I like the action. It's really well shot. It's really well written. But it is too long. 144 minutes is about as long as Civil War, but it doesn't have enough like action to, to fill that up or story. I think there's just too much filler in it. And uh, But the movie is really well done. Chris Cornell did a great job bringing Bond back to the mainstream. He made this a huge hit, and then we got Quantum of Solace, then we got Skyfall. Spectre I haven't seen yet. I got to review that sometime after I see it online because I don't have it. But it says Daniel Craig is the best Bond in the franchise's history. He's a good Bond. I don't think he's the best. My favorite one will probably be Timothy Dalton because I like both of his films. He did not do a single bad movie. I really enjoyed Day uh, Living Daylights, and I loved uh, License to Kill is my favorite of the entire series. It's an 80s badass movie. And this is PG-13, but it doesn't feel pussified. But like I said, cut down the running time. Get Eva Green out of there. I don't care about her. Or just replace her. And get somebody else that I buy. The other girl that's in it, I think uh, it's, um, yeah, that's in uh, uh, the Italian chick that's in this movie. Very beautiful. I have no problem with her. But she she kind of doesn't do much in the film. But uh, like I said, a visually stunning, awesome action movie that despite the running time, I can still enjoy. It, and it's a really good, fun watch. And if you haven't seen a Bond film, if you start with this one, you won't go wrong. I think it's really well done, so... That's a 2006 film from 10 years ago that I could recommend. But if you get bored, just skip some of the uh, the filler scenes, especially that torture scene. It's just, I don't need to see Daniel Craig naked on a chair, strapped, you know, with ropes and getting knocked in the balls. It's just, ew, that just is cringeworthy. It's like, I spit on your grave type stuff. Anyway, it's a good movie, though. So that's my review of the Kick-Ass Casino Royale. Really good movie little bit long in the tooth and some filler here but it's still solid and uh i will definitely recommend it for any bond fans out there the books or the films so thanks for watching thanks for liking subscribing commenting you guys are awesome i'm going to review another film right after this one it'll be coming soon because i want to keep this going i only have one more year to get through so i got through all two movies in the 2000s from 2000 to 2009 each year then i'll just review movies at random Again, from the two, from 2000, 2001, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, see you in a little bit, guys.